few people know the journey that coffee takes from bean to the cup in your favorite coffee spot. And the folks from Caldi's have invited us to go on the journey with them to see the entire process of coffee. So I packed my bags and headed out of the country with Tyler Zimmer, one of the owners of Caldi's Coffee, Frank McGinty, who is in charge of marketing for the company, and then also Tony Auger, who's one of their head roasters. you know, an American uh, coffee company to come down and create these very direct relationships. When most consumers hear like fair trade, that is a label that's put on packaging, but what you guys are really doing is is direct. Yeah. I mean, you're going totally. directly to yeah. the people who are growing it and negotiating with them directly. Yeah, right? exactly. Why should people understand why that matters? I think, you know, people are always curious where things come from. and, and of course we're in this business, we want to know where our core product comes from, what we do, and getting to know that person on the ground level and their passion, it fuels our passion. Uh, and then just understanding, it even helps us roast the coffee better, it helps us brew the coffee better, because we know the work that went into it behind it. We know the farmer's name and we can shake his hand and talk the details and know what date it was picked and all of those things that maybe is too much for some consumers to really want to know and that's okay but it's still it's really it's fascinating and, it, and you know, having the detail it just improves quality to the chain and then on top of it the relationship to come back here every year and source those lots and, and we're not just investing in the coffee we're investing in the producers uh, the quality that they produce every year and the only way that we can invest in them is by paying them a very fair price and more so so they can continue to invest in their farm for not just next year, but for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, you can make all these wild speculations on, you know, like the farmer does this, so X and Y, Z happens in the long run for me, but really like you, you can't make that connection until you see it and you hear, you know, a farmer or a miller speak directly about like what they're doing and how passionate they are about it. And then it just makes you feel good, makes renews your passion. The cupping is really where everything comes together for this process because the grower is able to present various coffees to the buyer to evaluate and choose which coffees to buy. And during the coffee cupping process, it's really pretty funny because each person has their own unique style of aspirating the coffee across their palate. I'm just drinking it, it's delicious. <laughs> One of the most important things about cupping and tasting coffee uh, is really engaging your sense of smell. Um, you know, more than 75% of tasting is actually, you know, flavors and aromas, so uh, the aroma is as important as the taste. Uh, so when we, when we taste, we slurp, and really we're incorporating oxygen and engaging our sense of smell, so it's a very important part of the process. Cupping is a critical part of the process of choosing which coffees Caldi's wants to bring back to its operations in Missouri. The cupping process begins with the grower deciding which coffees they want to present to Caldi's. Then those individual green beans are micro-roasted and ground immediately and then brewed. Each person who is participating in the cupping goes through and tastes small amounts of each coffee and makes notes on aroma and flavor and gives that coffee a score. You know, the, the, the key kind of key attributes that we are looking for, the levels of acidity, like the natural fruit acidities in these coffees, the level of sweetness, body, all these things that make up the entire profile of the cup. At the very end of the coffee cupping process, what each person does is essentially compares their notes. They calibrate against each other to see if they are judging the quality of the coffee in the same way. 
From this process, Tyler is able to decide which coffees he wants to buy and then bring back to Caldi's to roast and then serve in the cafes. Once the cupping is finished and the folks from Caldi's have chosen the coffees that they want to buy, all of those beautifully dried beans are brought here where they are sorted, bagged, and then shipped back to the caves in Kansas City. And we're back. We're here in Kansas City, and I am about 150 feet below the earth in a limestone cave that is a consistent temperature and humidity no matter what it's like outside. And this is where Caldi's ships and stores all of its green beans. I'm surrounded by bags of coffee from around the world, Rwanda, Kenya, Colombia, Brazil, and of course, El Salvador. And so from here, all of the coffee is gonna be put on a truck and then shipped over to St. Louis where it's going to be roasted. Coffee beans that are meant to be blended, because mm -hmm. some you buy are meant to go into blends, yep. and others are meant to be single origin. Mm -hmm. How do you treat those differently, kind of in that sampling yeah, process? Yeah, so the sampling process is no different. We're just looking maybe for different things and how the coffees might play with each other, but they all go through that same process. Um, you know, when we're doing blend, when we are bringing coffees in for blends, we kind of have an idea of where in the blend they're fitting and, and why we brought them in for that purpose. So we have an idea where we're going, but even then we'll still do some test blends to see how it's reacting and taste the espresso and things like that before it goes out. You know, every coffee when it comes in, it, the shelf life of the, of the green coffee is a little bit different. It depends on moisture content, water activity, uh, other things that are going on within that coffee. So that's one that we're constantly evaluating. We don't go a month without tasting coffee. We taste them every week to see how they're changing and reacting because that'll even change how we end up roasting the coffee even week to week. For me personally, being able to see how coffee is made it was surprising how simple the product actually is and how complicated the product yep. is. Yep. And I think that the average person who picks up a cup of coffee every single morning, if you really understand what goes into making that happen, you see coffee in an entirely different way. And I think that's one thing that people, it's so hard to understand, but it's so hard to produce just unbelievably great coffee all the time. And it takes so much for that to happen. So when it does, it's really something we should celebrate and enjoy and take our time and drink it and all those things because there's so much work that goes into the whole process.